Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So one of the things that we really worried about, thought about, however you want to figure it out, uh, before we decided to go full time was how we were going to get health care and how we were going to get prescription medicines when we're on the road. Uh, so let's dive into that this week and we hope you enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Warren. And I'm Maureen. And this is Bo. The pandemic and some personal health issues caused us to refocus on what's really important. So with our Airstream Claire Marshall, we embraced a new way of life, full-time RV living. Come along and share our adventures as we travel hither and yon across this great country. We'll find new places, meet new people, and fall in love all over again. Go! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're enjoying our videos. For those of you who've thought about full-time RVing, one of the things that uh, comes to mind, or at least it did for us. All right. Unfortunately, I feel really terrible. Um, I had the job today, the camera work, and I messed up. But I have to say, I told Warren to put the mic jack in the wrong spot on the camera so shh, he's outside doesn't know yet I'm trying to figure out a way to tell him so if you don't see me <laughs> in the future <laughs> you might watch Dateline <laughs> or not just kidding just kidding anyway we're gonna have to shoot this again tomorrow so hopefully it'll go well Actually, I know it'll go well because I figured out what I did wrong. One of the big differences that drives what works for uh, this person versus what works for another is what kind of medicines you take, uh, how many medicines you take, are you taking them for a chronic condition or are you taking them uh, for uh, just a temporary, like for example, taking an antibiotic for an infection. If you're 25, young, haven't been to the doctor in five years and you think none of this applies to you, Hold on, kiddos, because I promise you it will someday. Physicians and pharmacists are governed by a combination of federal and state laws. Uh, typically, a uh, physician cannot write a prescription to uh, a patient to be filled by a pharmacy in another state. There is, however, something called the Interstate Medical Licensure Compact. Uh, 19 states have gotten together and formed this compact where basically if uh, a physician or a pharmacist is licensed in one state, he or she is licensed in the other 18 states. Uh, for us particularly, that doesn't do us any good because North Carolina is not part of that compact. Uh, Texas and Florida, which are both very popular domicile states, are also not part of that compact. Uh, South Dakota is part of the compact. so. Uh, that gives you some flexibility, and as I said earlier, a lot depends on your individual circumstances. So if you domicile or live in a state that isn't part of that compact in the areas of the country you happen to travel to, that may impact your decision on how you go about getting your medicines. One of the things RVers like to do, and certainly something we intend to do someday, is to travel across the border into Canada and perhaps into Mexico as well. Uh, you need to be sure that when you're doing that and you have medication on board that uh, you have the original medicines in their original bottles or you have the prescriptions available. When you get to customs, you will have to produce a full list of your medicines. So I'd encourage you to print out the list from your medical uh, portal. Don't just rely on your memory because if you forget one and then it's found during a search, you could have some, some issues. Let's talk briefly about traveling with controlled substances. I know as full-timers, we think of our RV as our home, but to law enforcement, it is a motor vehicle, a moving vehicle. So you have to be very, very careful when you're traveling uh, with controlled substances. That could be pain medicines. There are other medicines that are not pain medications that happen to be uh, controlled medicines as well. Make sure that you have the, the original uh, prescription bottle or container with you. Uh, make sure you have that uh, original prescription available because if uh, law enforcement searches your vehicle for some reason, 
they find the medication, but you can't produce the prescription, you might have some, some issues there. Um, also, make sure that if there are restrictions put on you uh, by your physician for that medicine, for example, if there is a caution about operating your motor vehicle, operating heavy equipment, that sort of thing, make sure you follow those uh, guidelines because if for some reason you were involved in an accident and uh, you were on a medication that said you shouldn't be operating a medical a, a motor vehicle, you could find yourself at liability. There's a great article I found uh, from Escapees. It was written by one of their attorneys. I'll link it uh, below and it talks specifically about this issue. So I hope you'll uh, take a look at that. One of the neat things I found out doing research for this video is about Mexico. There are pharmacies set up in Mexico that specifically cater to full-time RVers. You can cross the border into Mexico with your prescription from a U.S. physician and you can get a one-year supply of your medicine in one shot. Now it's all cash. They don't uh, typically take credit cards. They certainly don't take insurance. So what people do is they will pay cash for it and uh, then make a claim back on their insurance. But the great thing is you're buying your year's worth of medicine for about one-tenth the cost of what it would cost you in the U.S. So if you take a lot of medicines, you live uh, relatively near the border, you're going to be traveling in that area, that might be a really great option for you to save a lot of money because as we all know, the, the cost of prescription drugs here in the U.S. is really, really out of control. But that's a good way you can save some money. Do be aware, when you come back into the U.S., you can only bring 90-day supply. So even though you can go into Mexico and you can buy a one-year supply, you can only bring 90 days worth back into the U.S. So people typically plan it out and they'll do multiple trips to get the medicines back across the U.S. But again, you're buying a full year's worth of medicine at 90% off what you would pay in the U.S. So that may be a pretty good option for you. All right, now that we have the basics out of the way, let's talk about what we tried, what worked, and what didn't work. The very first thing we tried, and we heard this a lot before we came full time, was, well, just simply, uh, if you use CVS, Walgreens, or Walmart, you can just have your prescription transferred uh, wherever you are, and once it's in the system, it's in the system, and you can get your stuff picked up wherever you happen to be. Well, that didn't work very well for us. The reason why is, I think if you had just one medicine, maybe two, and you could have them transferred to where you are, that would probably work just fine. There are two reasons it didn't work for us. The first is, uh, we have quite a few medicines. And so all these medicines are expiring at different times, having to be refilled at different times. And every time you have to transfer that medicine to the pharmacy you want it to be filled at, that's a process. So it was just a constant, constant thing of having um, prescriptions transferred in. The other thing is you can only transfer that prescription within say the Walgreens system. You can only do that four times a year. So again, if you have one medicine, you get it transferred to where you are, you fill out a 90 day supply, you go to your next location, you get another 90 day supply filled. That probably works just great. Okay, the next thing we tried was our mail order pharmacy. Now we have really good uh, medical coverage. We're very, very thankful for that. Uh, and part of that medical coverage is an option for mail order uh, prescriptions. And uh, so the first thing we did was, it, I mean, it's set up for you. If you live in a sticks and bricks, the, everything's just on automatic. You know, your, when your prescriptions are ready to be refilled, the system fills them, ships them to you. It's hands off, works great. But it doesn't work terribly well well, it didn't work terribly well for us on the road, and there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, the uh, the system would automatically fill uh, and ship them to wherever it thought we were, and that may be uh, a location where we where we had already left. We uh, had to backtrack a hundred miles on two separate occasions to pick up uh, medicine that was sent to the campground we had previously left. Uh, so that didn't work very well. Okay, the next thing we tried was our mail order pharmacy with uh, 
automatic prescriptions but having them go to our mail forwarding service we have a like most full-time RVers we have a mail forwarding service where all our mail comes to they sort it we decide what we want forwarded to our location and they take care of it uh, the the, uh, the pro there the, the big plus was all our medication was always going to the same place all the time so we didn't lose medication and that sort of thing the problem was we incurred both delays because uh, you know the medicine gets delivered at our mail forwarding service and then they have to turn it around and ship it to where we are there was some delay involved and there was some pretty significant cost involved too on one occasion we paid forty one dollars to get one box of medicine sent to our, our location so what is working well for us now is using our mail forwarding service but we're doing the refills manually so we're not letting the system decide what and when needs to get refilled we do that manually and we're also controlling manually the address that the medicines get sent to so it gives us an ability to control maybe if we're going to be somewhere uh, a week and it's going to be three days before we go on to the next place we can have the medicine go to uh, our, our, per, our future location rather than trying to, to have it come to where we are now so that's working out really really well all right i just want to talk a little bit about our uh, mail order pharmacy setup we have great insurance for which we are very very blessed and thankful uh, through that we get a mail order pharmacy option and it uses uh, the cvs caremark system We've been very, very pleased with it. Uh, the first uh, uh, big benefit is they have a dashboard where you can go on and you can see in a nutshell all your prescriptions, all your orders, what's coming up, that sort of thing. You can go look at each prescription medicine that you have, uh, see when it's gonna come up for refills, uh, how many refills you have left. All that information is right there at your fingertips. There is a great section uh, they have that gives you information about drug interactions. I don't care whether it's uh, aspirin or any other drug known to man, every, every medicine has side effects and has interactions with other medications or food or something else. And with this uh, part of the CVS Caremark system, you can plug your medicine into the system and it'll tell you what other medicines it might interact with uh, that could cause you a problem. And the last thing is it has a great medical library. If you have a procedure coming up or you have a question about a particular disease, you can learn a lot. They have a lot of uh, interactive video and other things that you can use there. So it's been very, very helpful. Well guys, that's gonna do it for this week. I hope you found this video useful. If you uh, enjoyed it, consider putting a ring on it. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and click that bell for future notifications. Until then, safe travels on the road, and we'll see you next time.